Let's talk about this. I remember the first time that I understood the concept of a quantizer. Uh, it just kind of blew my mind. And after that, I was just like, oh, there's so many possibilities. There's so many things that you could do with a device that just takes voltage and you can pick a scale for it to adhere to. That can mean a lot of different things. You can use it for pitches, you can use it for modulation. I thought I'd do a couple of videos that might uh, show a little bit of how I use this quantizer. This is the Bard Quartet by uh, Shockmat. Uh, and it's great. It's four channels and uh, it's not only a continuous quantizer, it's got um, it's like a track and hold, it has an ARP function to it, all in uh, one small little package. And this harmony dial is amazing. I don't think I get into that in this video, but maybe the next one. Anyway, check this out. So let me tell you why I think quantizers are so exciting. Um, we're gonna take this bipolar uh, LFO. We're gonna run it out into 3x MIA, and then I'm gonna use this other channel, uh, this second channel here, so that I can offset the voltage. Oh, that's right in the middle of where you're trying to see me. Okay. Um, so we're gonna run that out here, and then uh, we're gonna run that right into this volt per octave of the pizza. Pizza here is on channel one. Oh, that's really high. Let me turn that down. Ooh. Let's make the alpha go faster. I mean, that is cool. But let's see what we can do with this if we take it out of, instead of straight out of there, say if we toss that into this Bard Quartet, which is a quantizer. And then we're gonna take it out of the Bard Quartet into pizza again. You can see this, the voltage like bouncing around all over the place. If I go turn this up, all of a sudden we're adhering to all these notes. We can slow down the LFOs. And that is why quantizers are kind of magic. Okay, second part here. Um, let's, one thing that you're going to notice is the voltage is going all over the place. It's going really, really high, really, really low. Let's, uh, attenuate that, right? So if we take that out of, this is coming from the 3X MIA, that's the two LFOs. We're going to bounce that, uh, through veils so that we can attenuate it and then put it in to uh, the Bard Quartet again. So this is what we were hearing before. Oh, this might be a little bit higher. This is a little bit of boost on bales, I think. But if we push it down... All of a sudden, we're having a smaller range of notes. Something that we can do over here on the Bard Quartet uh, is 
make it so that uh, it has a track and hold here. Let's see if we can figure out, remember how to set it up. Uh, if we go to the gate in from, let's say, let's take channel four of this, the very gate. If we're doing the very gate, it's going to need to run. I'm going to clock that with the cycling slope generator on uh, the O coast. And that's just clocking everything actually. So, uh, how's this going to work? So we've got that going in through there. Uh, the gate in is on, which means that it's only going to change notes when, uh, this light here is, uh, is, is on, um, uh, based on the gate pattern there. So if I turn this up, so we might need to make it so that the notes are changing more rapidly. So we're going to speed up the alpha. Oh, and I just noticed that this is uh, a length of three. Let's just make it simple, make it... Okay, so we can see this here. The note is only changing uh, when that gate is high. And we're getting a little blinking light here from the trigger out, because that's on at the same time. That just... Uh, uh, lights up every time the note changes, but we can also see the note changing here. Say so if we wanted to make that change of note more regular. Cool. So that's just a free running LFO into a quantizer being attenuated. It's pretty great, right? Okay, so let's change it up. Let's change this to an envelope. And then I'm going to use that to on the VCA for the channel of um, pizza. Oh, it's really low there. Right? Um, so if we want that to be an envelope, there we go. So that's just being clocked uh, from the, from the Ocos here. Right, oh, straight cable, sorry. Right? Not super exciting yet, okay. Uh, what about if we took, uh, we have the variegate here what about if we used the variegate um, into this right here, into the veils that we're attenuating, right? We're attenuating this, uh, this channel or this voltage coming in from the variegate from channel one. Let's just restart or uh, set that to zero, zero that out. Cool, okay, so if we turn up that now, we can hear uh, pizza doing thing. Now, it's being attenuated all the way down, so we're not hearing, oh, let's do the variegate first. So if we wanna, oh, now, let's do uh, veils first. We So we move that up all the way. Now, this is open, so we're going from the variegate to veils, from veils to the quantizer, quantizer into pizza. Now, if we change these note values here on the variegate, we still get nothing because we've got the gate inset. Ha ha, turn that off. Well, it's high. Right? So we need to attenuate again. 
And then, watch what's gonna happen now. Here, I don't need this anymore. The whole idea in that you're just constraining what you're actually hearing to the actual note values that you want, and then you're also using the attenuator so that you're constraining what you have, uh, yeah, you're constraining uh, the range of that note, which is uh, of the range of those pitches, which is cool. And you have so much control over this. So over here on Veils, I have offsets, so I can just shift that whole thing up a little bit, which is super cool. Or say I want to uh, create a little bit of a curve, so like uh, the notes that are in the middle won't really be heard so much, but it'll just be the high and the low notes. So if we turn up this response curve, see how it's like a lot of low notes and really high notes? Something that I was thinking about the other day was, um, what about if you just had some, like obviously you can take random voltage uh, in uh, just the same way. So this is random voltage from the O-Coast. Unplug that there. Yeah, and then we just have like random like uh, West Coast synthesis styles, just kind of like generative passion stuff. But say uh, you want to constrain those voltages again, shift them up. Right? Still works really great. But I thought I just got this Acid Rain Tech uh, Switchblade, and this has been super, super fun. So let's take. Let's take the uh, random voltage out from the O coast, put that into the switchblade. Let's take the uh, sequence that we have, the eight step sequence running from the variegate into this second in of uh, channel three on, that, on uh, the switchblade. And then what this is gonna allow is us to switch between those two uh, sequences the random kind of generated voltage from uh, the Ocos and the uh, eight step sequence from the variegate and the result is actually really really interesting like a lot more interesting than just the eight step sequence so you'll notice this light that will switch back and forth between uh, green and red and that will just indicate which uh, side of the uh, of the switch is being like put through into this. So we're running those two voltages into the switch and then they're coming out here back into fails and I'll turn it up now. So I'm using channel two here to switch between the two. What we're actually seeing is something like this, I think. So it's just switching every eight steps. And what if it doesn't switch at all? That's the random. And that's the sequence from the, uh, from the variegate. Now, what about if we sequence this uh, on the variegate when it switches in an interesting way. So like say we wanted the random notes just in say like right here. I think it's, it's switch. So 
So always within those couple notes, we're getting random voltages in there. I think that's super cool. But what about if the length of that sequence was a little bit shorter? So we change the track length to say six or five. And then let's change where those, where that's, the change is falling. I just think that's so cool. And then when you have something simple like this, it's very easy just to patch in some drums. Let's go. Ah, just bump the camera. Uh, let's go from the mix out into channel one here, or channel three here, are the veil, so I can control the volume and then out of there into uh, this adder up here I'm using as a mixer and turn that up.
very easy to get lost in a patch, <laughs> especially running a quantizer. It's just like, there's so much flexibility. You can just reach out and switch them up, do all sorts of stuff, um, add them together, CV them, uh, just add random voltage, and it's all a good time. I love it. Quantizers are magical. Anyway, this is just one way that I use a quantizer, and that is continuous quantization. So it just takes whatever note is coming in and just automatically snaps it to uh, something that is from your selected scale or your notes, and that's it. That's basically all it's doing in this patch. And yeah, it's just really wonderful and really performable. And yeah, I'm excited to show other ways that I use uh, this quantizer or that you can use most quantizers. I just happened to choose the Bard Quartet because it has four channels and that's sweet. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye.